What's up everyone, welcome to the second part of Bootloader Development Mini-Series and in today's video we're gonna implement Global Descriptor Table and we're gonna switch to 32-bit Protected Mode. Make sure you watch part 1 if you haven't already and subscribe so that you don't miss any new videos. And one more thing before we start, I have a new Discord server, so if you are interested in low-level programming and malware and wanna meet like-minded people, check it out, link in the description. Global Descriptor Table is a data structure that defines characteristics of various memory segments. It can be graphically represented like this. In each row you have an address, which is GDTR plus offset. GDTR is a register that holds an address to the beginning of the global descriptor table. Each entry in the table describes a segment in a form of segment descriptor structure. Notice that first entry is always null. Segment descriptor is 8 bytes long and contains essential information about the segment. Base contains the linear address where the segment begins. Limit tells the maximum addressable unit, so essentially it specifies the size of the segment. Access bytes is another structure by itself, starting with P, which is present bit. It indicates if segment is present in memory, 1 for yes, 0 for no. DPL, descriptor privilege level, indicates the CPU privilege level of the segment, 0 being kernel privilege, which is the highest, and 3 being user application, which is the lowest privilege. S is descriptor type bit, if 0 then it's a system segment, if 1 it is either code or data segment. E, executable bit, if 0 then it's a data segment, if 1 then it's a code segment, and code can be executed from it. So S and E basically tell us with what type of segment we are dealing with. Now we have DC, which is either direction bit, if we are dealing with data segment, or conforming bit, if we are dealing with code segment. It's just a matter of interpretation of the value. So if you are dealing with direction bit, uh, if clear, which means zero, the segment grows up, and if one, the segment grows down. In example, offset has to be greater than the limit, right? So that's how we interpret DC in case of dealing with data segment. If we are dealing with code segment, then we are calling it uh, conforming bit, and if it's clear, the code in this segment can only be executed from the ring set in DPL, the privilege ring I told you earlier, and if it's set which means one, code is uh, the, in this segment can be executed from an equal or lower privilege level. The same thing is going on with RW, it's either readable bit or writable bit. For code segments, readable bit, and if it's clear, uh, read access for this segment is not allowed, if it's set, read access is allowed. One more time, clear means uh, it is set to zero, and set means it is set to one. For data segments, writable bit, if clear, write access for this segment is not allowed, if set, write access is allowed. So this is sort of opposite to the first one. A, which is accessed bit, when the CPU accesses a segment, it sets this bit to 1, uh, to record that this segment has been accessed. Last thing in segment descriptor is flags structure, which contains granularity flag. The state of granularity flag tells how limit should be interpreted. If the flag is set to 0, then limit is interpreted in 1 byte units. If it's set to 1, then the unit is for kilobytes. It allows to address much larger uh, address space. Now, if you have any questions, of course, you can ask me in the comments or check out OS Dev. They have a great documentation of global descriptor table and all the answers should be there. Okay, so let's start from where we left. Uh, this is the code from part one, of course. We're gonna implement JDT here. So JDT implementation. Starting with GDT start label, like this. First entry uh, must be also eight zeros. Copy paste it so we have two of them. Now we want to implement code segment descriptor. Descriptor. Firstly, uh, first thing was the limit, just like in the graphic I showed you. Uh, I'm gonna write some more detailed comments uh, later, as you can see, uh, I have commented each of uh, every line from before, from the project uh, before, you're gonna have uh, the code with these comments on my GitHub, again, link in the description. Then you have uh, another part of base, actually let me just now type, like there's a limit, uh, here is base, and here is base too. 
base. All right, then we have access byte. Actually, uh, this second base should be DB. Uh, then we have access byte, DB. And uh, with the access byte, let me show you the documentation. Here we have the, uh, the, the access byte and what do we want to have? We want to have present bit allows an entry to refer to a valid segment. Uh, right, so must be set one if any valid segment. So we want to set it to one. So just type one here. Then uh, reading uh, next bit is descriptor privilege level field contains CPU privilege level. As I said before, we want to give it the highest privilege. Uh, you can see it occupies two bits, so we want to go with zero, zero. If you wanna, uh, so we are coding in binary right now, so if you wanted to type one, two, or three here, you would have to go like this, this, uh, like, uh, like that, basically. But we are going uh, with zero, so double zeros here. Next, oops, sorry, not this thing. Uh, I wanted to click here. Uh, descriptor type bit. If clear, zero, the descriptor defines a system segment. If set one, it defines code or data segment. We will be defining, we are defining code segments. So one here. Then you have uh, executable bit. Zero defines data segment. One for code segment. Again, one, we are defining code segment. Next, what we have? Conforming bit. We are, in, we are defining code segment, so we are interpreting DC as conforming bit. Uh, what here? Zero if this segment can be executed uh, executed from the ring set in DPL. Exactly what we want. So next thing is zero. Then we have RW. Uh, we are interpreting it as a readable bit for code segment readable bit, as you can see. And here we are uh, we are specifying one. And as the last thing is the access bit, we're gonna set it to zero because uh, we are coding it right now, so the CPU didn't access it yet. All right, so let me just align it so it looks prettier. Don't forget this B at the end to signify that it is uh, in binary. And this is the access byte. Okay, and space like that, so it is. Uh, it looks nice. And the next thing is flux. Again, it's gonna be in binary, and uh, this is basically basically the same process. Uh, we're gonna set granularity flag to uh, four kilobytes blocks, and uh, let me type the whole flux register uh, flux field like this. So this is uh, basically saying that we have granularity to four kilobytes, thirty-two bit segment, and limit bits sixteen. Uh, 19 like this so uh, basically yeah if you have uh, any questions whatsoever towards uh, GDT as I said before you can also always write me down in the comments or in the discord server uh, but the uh, osdev.org should have all the answers uh, for you even there's even more information that we're gonna cover uh, that we are not gonna cover yeah there's more information that we are not gonna cover um, but yeah, basically, this might be confusing at, uh, at the beginning, once you see it first time. Uh, but if you go a little bit deeper, try to understand it, it uh, it's really gonna be fine. And we are finishing it with uh, another base field, as in the graphics. So type base here. Nice, so we have the code uh, segment descriptor ready. And we gonna basically copy paste it with some minor changes. This is gonna be data segment descriptor. And uh, we are gonna change this. We are gonna change this to one zero zero. Wait, one zero zero one zero zero one zero. And why is that? We are changing this part because we're gonna have a we're gonna have a, a data segment so conforming bit yes it is gonna be uh, no 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 sorry this part we are changing this part uh, descriptor type bit is gonna be one then executable uh, bit is gonna be 
uh, zero. As you can see, executable bit is gonna be one, two, three, four, fifth here. So one, two, three, four, fifth is zero. Here it was uh, one, as you can see. So some minor changes, uh, but very important. And flags stays the same and everything else stays the same. Yeah, so basically this access byte is what uh, what uh, changes here. Uh, next, we want this label GDT end because we this is gonna be the this is gonna symbolize where our GDT ends. So we can then refer to GDT end as to the uh, as to the address sort of of the of the end of uh, of our global descriptor table. And uh, next label GDT descriptor. And here you just wanna specify gdt and minus gdt start minus one, which is the size of gdt minus one. All right, so basically finish minus start minus one. That's why we need this label. And then we want dd jdt start which is uh, the base address of JDT. All right, now that we have JDT in place, let's talk about protected mode. Protected mode is the main operating mode for modern 32-bit Intel processors. It allows access to up to four gigabytes of addressable memory, which is significant increase compared to one megabyte offered by the real mode. Additionally, protected mode enables operating system to introduce various protection mechanisms, for example, privilege levels through a system known as rings. Okay, so before we start jumping to real mode, let's do some cleaning. I don't want to print any messages anymore. So let me delete this. We also don't need this. And uh, that's all. Let's create a label load PM, for example, clear all interrupts, load, uh, load GDT like this, load GDT and the uh, GDT descriptor, that's what you want to pass here. Now we need to set a uh, one bit in control register uh, to be more precise, the bit that is called protected mode enable. We want to set it to one, so or AL one, this uh, arithmetic. So basically what we are doing is we are copying this uh, register to EAX and we are setting the lower part of EAX to one. So if you look at this diagram uh, one more time, uh, the first bit in uh, CR0 is the protected mode enable. So we are basically setting this uh, first bit to one like that. And we want to move to CR0 EAX one more time. So now CR0 has this protection uh, mode bit enabled. All right, so once we have uh, that, we want to perform a jump, unconditional jump to, uh, to, to, to where? I need this uh, label right now. Let's call it uh, P mode main label. This is gonna be our, and it is gonna be bits 42. So this is gonna be our main function for protected mode, sort of. Now, uh, before actually, let me correct one mistake, because here it should be dd, not db. Uh, that's the first thing, we can do it like this even. And the second thing is that we need uh, to declare two things, just to make our life uh, a little bit easier, just m more, m more to make the code more readable, because we need uh, some offsets. We need uh, a code segment offset, so that it, let's call it code offset, that is gonna be equal to 0x8 and we need a data offset that's gonna be equal to 0x10. So these are basically offsets of uh, code segment and data segment from GDT start, right? So here's 0x8 and here's 0x10. You can understand it like this. My scroll is lagging, I don't know why, uh, but all right. So basically we want to do this jump here. Let me finish this instruction code offset p mode main and once we jump from uh, here to here we want to set some registers so move ax move uh, ax data offset like this and here move ds ax move 
ES AX move FS AX move SS AX move GS AX move EBP to 0x9C00 move ESP to EBP 0x9 EBP uh, 0x9C00 why this number well uh, in uh, protected mode we have much more memory right and we are setting up, up the stack one more time so we need to find the location remember that our bootloader is loaded here so we need to find a location memory far enough that our stack will not overflow the bootloader code and uh, any other important stuff so this will be this will be okay the uh, the space between 0x7c00 where our bootloader starts and 0x9c00 is completely enough for stack to not over to not uh, overflow anything and uh, as the last thing, let me tell you about uh, A20 line. A20 address line is a physical representation of 21st byte. It basically allows us to address memory beyond one megabyte. And uh, I don't want to get into technical details uh, of it. You can read uh, everything about A20 from the link in the description. There is an OSDEV uh, page for it, separately for it. Uh, so you're welcome to go and check out more details, but here's how to enable it 0x92 or AL2 oh, misspelled AL and uh, out 0x92 AL Just like that and let me finish it with an infinite jump So jump and dollar sign We are in 32-bit protected mode now and we are ready to load our kernel And that's what we're gonna do in the next video So make sure to subscribe and join the discord Link in the description, and as always, see you soon.